Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Window Treatment Friday Live. We are about to go live on um, Instagram, so give us one second here, and then we'll introduce the episode on both platforms at the same time. And we are actually live on Instagram. Hello, hello, Instagram world. And welcome, welcome to episode number 119 of Window Treatment Friday Live. In just a second, I am going to be joined by my (laughs) colleague and friend, Kimberly Serafin from Window Works. I will view request. I will go live, accept request. Let's make sure that you're there. And how do you like, how do you guys like our outfits today? Our headgear. I mean, it's not as fun as our previous Halloween episodes. I think our first Halloween episode is really when we have. I don't know. I'm still having a great time. (laughs) Went for it. All right. I'm going to join you live in just a sec. If you want to take over and let everyone know what we're doing today. Yes. So today uh, we thought it would be fitting since Halloween is on Monday that we would do an episode on um, what could go wrong with window treatment, some of our scary stories. So, oh, here we are. Okay. And I'm having... Because, you know, we, over here. we, you know, Kim and I, we do window treatments every day of uh, every week and every year. Yes. And we make <laughs> things beautiful and we make things look easy and we make it look like the way it should be. So anyone who is not as familiar, of course, can be like, well, of course, that's what it should look like. <laughs> Good morning, Gina. And the, the truth of the matter is it doesn't. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what pitfalls to avoid, if you don't know how to mitigate things, then some things can go seriously wrong. But before we jump into our content today, Kim, do you want to tell us how this whole thing gets started? So this whole Window Treatment Friday Live stems from Vida and Luann's episode on Luann's podcast, A Well-Designed Business where they discuss um, on Fridays as part of the Power Talk Friday series, they discuss the business side of um, window treatments. So from there in the pandemic, about two years ago, Vita and I decided it would be kind of fun to bring the visual side of the window treatment business to life. So that's how WTF Live got started. (laughs) All right, so let's talk about the first scenario of how things can go wrong. Okay, Kim, do you see anything that's wrong with this? I see, yes. So okay, right tell here, me what you see. Mm-hmm. So I spy with my little eye. Yes, um, that's right. <laughs> Is that the game that we're playing today? <laughs> spy the mistake. Um, so what you're seeing here is a velvet drape with trim on the lead edge and the lead edge with a hike up. That's right. <laughs> It's like uh, Miss Scarlet in the ballroom with <laughs> with a club or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure which game we're playing. Maybe we're playing both yeah. at the same time. I spy yeah. and clue. Yeah. All right. So that is exactly what's happening here. The leading edge is what's called spiking up or riding up. So really what should happen is the leading edge, which is the edge that is with the trim, should fall very nicely and easily, just like the other falls that you see in that drape. But instead, it is puckering, it is riding up, it is hiking up, it is all of those things. So what is the problem here? And the problem is... (laughs) Not even. um, Actually, (laughs) the reason rather for the problem is the trim when applied to a fabric can sometimes because there are two different mediums when one is applied on top of the other and sewed on over the length of the drape which usually is minimum eight feet but oftentimes Mm -hmm. nine feet and ten feet so with the length of those 100 to 120 inches it is slowly but surely starts to um Uh, like grab on the fabric just a little bit so Mm -hmm. when the machine sews it down the leading edge all the way from the top to the bottom it like very very minute grabs so maybe like a 16th of an inch here and 16th of an inch here and 16th of an inch there and by the time it comes all the way down 
um, the fabric can no longer handle another sort of foreign application being mm -hmm. applied to it. And it no longer hangs freely with gravity, but it is the trim that is like grabbing it all along the edge and ultimately makes it <coughs> right up like that. Yep. So that's, so that's one that that is the most obvious scenario here. And then I'll show you some others later, but that's, I think what is happening here. So Vita, can you let everyone out there watching? What is the potential fix for this? If there's a potential fix for this? Yeah. Yeah, and there's definitely a fix for it because yeah. this should not be happening. So if you guys, if you're an interior designer and your workroom gave you a drape like that, shame on that. This should never happen. If you're an end consumer and your window treatment specialist, specialist installed a drape like that, that should never happen. Shame on them. So, you know, so your job is to question it, to send it back potentially. If you are a workroom and this is happening to you, um, you can change the settings on the machine. Now, it's sometimes very difficult to, to not, it's, it's not like there's a change. There's like a minute regulation and mm -hmm. you have to play around and fiddle with it. And sometimes it's not possible because oftentimes our machines handle all sorts of fabrics and all sorts of trim. And um, it's just, it's, sometimes it's impossible to just really regulate it like that. Press the trim good and put it on table over the fabric and work with pins. You can, Ella, that is very true. And that is what usually happens. The issue is when you take that trim all pressed mm -hmm. down and pinned onto the machine, machine. and yeah. you straight stitch it, it's the machine that is slowly but surely, again, over the course of the drape, starts picking at it every, like every so minutely. And if the drape was five inches, nobody would know. But when the drapes is, drape, drape was 20 inches over the course, it starts to really um, like grab it up like that. So um, if the changing the setting, or it's not changing the setting. That's not, that's a misnomer. It's not like you can change the setting on your iPhone and, you know, change notifications or, you know, stop it from ringing or stop it from, you know, popping up, um, doing pop-ups. It is, it is playing around with the settings um, and, and fiddling with the machine, which is not always possible. So um, fix number two is to apply trim by hand. Mm -hmm. It is very laborious, very time consuming, but it's possible if you want quality work. And yet another fix to that is if the fabric is the main fabric, if it is heavy enough, like this velvet, then you can, instead of stitching down the trim, you can actually glue the trim down and you do it on the table um, when flat. And like Ella said, just mm -hmm. like really, Put it down okay. flat, iron it on, and just make it make sure that it, it like presses really well together. Um, now, the issue oftentimes with when you do something on the table is that it looks great on the table, but when you hang you it, hang it, gravity, <laughs> gravity takes over. Exactly. Oh yeah. Gravity, gravity is a wonderful thing and a horrible thing at the same time. So oftentimes, what we would do is we, if when we have a large, like wide trim like that, when the trim is heavy we would apply the trim while the drape is hanging so that the gravity of the fabric kind of matches the gravity of the trim and everything is applied together while hanging. And that yeah. way, um, apply the trim before your tabling, before you do the tabling. So what you're saying, Ella, is you would sew the trim onto the drape and then you would do the hems. I think that's what you're saying. Um, it's possible too. That's right. You could possibly do that as well. You really need to figure out the, uh, the width from which, from the edge where to apply mm -hmm. the hem. So if it's, if it's a two inch, uh, double hem, so it's four and then whatever the distance is that you need to apply the, the distance from the edge that you need to apply the, uh, the trim on, uh, you could potentially do that too. What I found actually one of the Yes, that's what she's saying. Um, one of the pitfalls of that is when you go, when you run the drape through the blind hammer, mm -hmm. it is the blind hammer then that is not able to handle the trim in the front. Yeah. So it is the, the issue of, of this really stems from the fact that you have two different 
mediums. You have the weight of the fabric and the makeup of the fabric with the weight of the trim and the makeup of the trim. And when they're applied together, um, it, ju it just starts. It's like, a, I mean, I don't want to say it's like a chemical reaction because obviously it's not, but it's a topical reaction. Yeah. <laughs> and so topically, you see how uh, the fabric starts going askew a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so um, not good, not acceptable. Do not accept this, um, this no. type of result. And the, the workrooms, you guys do have um, ways of uh, mitigating it. Now, I have to tell you, this was one of our projects. So this is not something that I found on the internet. This is, some, this is a mistake that we made early on. We were tabling it, um, Ella, or rather doing everything horizontally on the table. We didn't do a tabling the way quite you're saying it, but we're doing everything horizontally and everything look great. When it lays on the table, it looks terrific. It is it is when it when it hangs. So we ended up undoing the hem, undoing the trim in customer's home while it was hanging and mm -hmm. redoing everything by hand. And then it looked yeah. really good. Alrighty. All right. R quick commercial break. If you are new to window treatments and are just starting out, whether you're an interior designer or a homeowner, um, and you're just starting to dabble into this lovely world of window treatments, head on over to windowworksnj.com. We have a free ebook on our website for you that Luann wrote a couple years ago. It's Architectural Digest is Incoming, 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatments. So it's like a window treatment 101 guide, if you will. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. Right. So what do you spot, Kim, here? All right. Now, I'm going to get real close to the screen, uh -huh. peeps, because these pictures on my... They're, okay. So we have a board-mounted or ceiling-mounted drape, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and that first lovely pleat is kind of billowing out a little bit. That's right. That is exactly what's happening. So it's kind of very... Uh, similar to the previous picture where the rest of the drape is hanging nicely um, and under gravity it has beautiful folds mm -hmm. and it is the leading edge again that is misbehaving it's always these leading edges that are misbehaving and they're giving all of us window treatments treatment pros some agita so have you ever had this before kim um we have and we actually have it here um not with the leading edge but the whole fabric with one of our displays here in the showroom and once the fabric started misbehaving like that we were like should we take this down and we're like nope we're gonna leave this up because this is a good representation of sometimes we try to manipulate a certain fabric that's woven in a certain direction that mm -hmm. doesn't want to behave nicely and mm -hmm. so it it annoys me when I walk by it every day <laughs> multiple times a day and the pleats don't hang nicely, but I have other window treatments where the pleats to show hang off. Nicely yes. to show off. But like, you know, when we know we're having company or a party, we tie them up and we dress them and we leave them like that. <laughs> While everybody walks in, we cut them real quick <laughs> so it doesn't look so crazy. But yeah, I yeah. mean, if you were to walk into Window Works right now, our drape above our stairwell, you uh -huh. know, it the whole it's, thing. You're looks not crazy. loving it. No. Yeah. And I, I like it, it. It hurts me, but I it's there for a reason to show like. This is what can happen. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you exactly what's happening here. This was, actually was not one of our projects. It's a picture that I snapped when I was at a at a clubhouse somewhere at some yeah. sort of function or event, and I saw these. So what's happening here is that the drape was fabricated. <laughs> Uh-oh. Crouton has something to say. He, he thinks it's very looking to. It's scary. To, oh, Pluton, <laughs> stop. You know what? He's seeing another dog walking around or a deer. So we're just going to have to do it. Pluton, Pluton, come here. Okay. <laughs> so what's happening is that the drape was made in a, like a pillowcase. Mm -hmm. So what that means is two pieces of fabric, meaning the face fabric and the, and the lining, they were put together like that. They were stitched together, and then they yeah. were inverted, just like you would have a pillowcase. So think of a pillowcase. You invert it. You put the pillow on, and then you, you put it yeah. right side on. So this is exactly what is happening with this drape. 
the right way of making the drape is when you put the face fabric and the lining together and you start folding them you start folding them together both uh, love but both layers of fabric mm -hmm. the lining and the face get folded together meaning they get hemmed together and then you have a blind hammer that you run down the leading edge and the blind hammer goes, no stitching that's showing on the face side that's why it's blind so it's a blind hammer what's happening here is the easier way to make a drape the faster way to make a drape is to do it the other way to do it the pillowcase way Two, two, two pieces of fabric together and then you inverted them out but what happens is when you hang it that that pillowcase edge is what you call it, or a knife edge um, it it doesn't stay flat it doesn't want to hang nicely it starts coming apart so the face fabric comes this way the lining comes this way it starts like billowing and and kind of curling. And that's exactly what's happening here. And it's just not the look of a custom drink that you want. No, and especially because it looks like, you know, a lot of times on board mounted, um, we often have the discussion of, do you just mount it on the face or do you wrap both sides of the return? So mm -hmm. also by wrapping the return, you're adding that extra layer, causing it also to kind of mm -hmm. billow out and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, so what do you guys do? Because that is a conversation that we have as well. Do we wrap it around the return or do we do we leave it straight, but then you can see inside the board? It it depends, honestly. And it, it becomes a big conversation that we have with the client and the designer. Um, mm -hmm. But then we also we line it really pretty and whatnot, because sometimes especially it's it's harder when you're going over a window treatment. So when we're going over like outside mounted blinds say you can't necessarily wrap it because when you wrap it then the fabric is hitting whatever the shade that we're going over and then you don't want to make your board right. too too big because then it projects out too far too so far, exactly. those are the kinds of conversations that we have at nauseum <laughs> yeah but you have to because those are details on whether or not you want the drape wrapping the board and, and this or otherwise it may look like this <laughs> yeah so the scary looking drape <laughs> ah you guys a quick commercial break here we wanted to let you know that uh, we have some free gifts for you so from vitalia inc we put together a lookbook a free lookbook called 37 and a half window treatment ideas for you to steal swipe and use immediately on your next design project so on an off chance that this is the first time you're hearing about it and you want to be inspired by window treatments and or use any of our ideas on your projects i would love for you to head on over to vitaliainc.com and grab yours today ah what are we seeing here miss kim next example of scary stories <laughs> all in in uh in in honor of halloween coming up are we talking about how the fabric isn't laying taut on the one arm that's right that's oh. right ding 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 <laughs> i was like there's no way to make those stripes go the same direction uh -huh. i wouldn't want to and so okay so you have it good on one arm on one that's chair right. That's right. And the other chair didn't want to necessarily behave. That's right. That's so. right. Now, this was, um, I do have to say, this was not the fabric's fault. <laughs> yeah. Now, oftentimes, we, we do blame the fabric, and, and it's yeah. rightfully so. And we will have examples of that, I believe. But in this case, this was a strictly fabrication um, error. The not qualified person was doing it, and he just didn't do a very good job at this. So this is exactly what Kim is saying. The fabric on the arm of the right-hand side chair is not as stretched. It's not as taut oh, on the mm -hmm. arm. It, it, it crinkles and it wrinkles, and it really should be very similar to what the left chair looks like. Now, what can be done here? First of all, you need to have the same amount of foam on both chairs. Mm -hmm. But let's say it was only one chair, even it was crinkling like that. You need to have the right amount of foam, number one. You need to have the right amount of Dacron. Now, Dacron mm -hmm. is this sort of um, slight stiffener, slight um, volumizer to any cushion or any upholstery piece. 
and mm -hmm. and those come in various thicknesses too and then once you have the right amount of foam and dacron you really need to stretch pull. and pull the fabric over that foam you can't just kind of like nicely lay over it and then do your stapling no yeah. you really need to stretch and pull over the foam over the dacron over any kind of you know have rounded surface that you have on the chair now of course if you work with an experienced upholster you'll never have this but here we are telling you giving you our scary stories again real story this is for, for real this is what happened to us one chair mm -hmm. was fine the other one came out like that and i made uh, my upholster redo this because there's no way i would have delivered this to our customers and, and the thing the right. thing that makes me crazy is like you you have eyes you're looking at it they don't look the same yeah well let me tell you i mean the guy was like oh no 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 this is exactly how it's supposed to look and you know one was slightly different but i don't know he was just giving me all sorts of uh um pushback pushback and like he was like making up stories as if I'm like i'm like hello i wasn't bored yesterday i really really know what i'm doing <laughs> fix it and yeah yeah and um actually he wouldn't have had to go and find a different upholster to do no i i had a, a similar story like that with a french mattress mm. where those yeah, are french hard. mattresses are fun yes they're, they're very hard very difficult. they're hard mm -hmm. and i gave the exact dimensions on what to fabricate the cushion at make it like mm -hmm. this make it like this mm -hmm. and he decided to add an inch <gasps> all around yeah and so when Billy went to go put the mattress in, it didn't fit. Or it, it got fit. all squished in. No, it was it was overhanging about an inch. Oh, and it yeah, was outside it mount. Okay. Yeah. No, no, it was it was a whole like mud room situation where it was in between two cabinets in the laundry room, but it was overhanging an inch on the on the from back to oh, front. On the, on the front. Okay. And okay. then even on the side, like it was like scrunched. And and yeah, I even had Billy double check my measurement on this because this was one this was many, 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 many years ago. And he was giving us such a hard time about it. And he was like, do you know how this is going to be times? Like, it's going to take me so much time to take it apart. And I was like, okay. It has to be done right. Like, how does you one have to do with another? Right. <laughs> right. Like, I, know. I, I get it. It sucks. But, yeah, like, yeah. you got to, so, you know. Moral of the story, you guys, whether you're an interior designer or a window treatment professional who doesn't do your own fabrication and you send out for fabrication or use an off-site workroom, if something doesn't look right, if it, if you don't like it there, and, and they push back on you, then you're absolutely within your right to push back on them. No, so you have to I, advocate. It takes bravery, yeah. it takes courage, but you have to advocate for yourself. <laughs> ah, what is happening here, my friend? <laughs> well, let's see. Did the, is this a, a fabric where the drape grew and now it's puckering at the uh, bottom over there, the bottom hem? Now, it's hard to tell. Is this just like a quarter inch rolled bottom hem at the bottom? No, it it's like not. A, it's a, it's oh, a full four inch four double inch. hem. Okay, because from the picture, it just looks like it's a beaded It's a little weighted. bit difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is but, my yes. favorite. Yes, that is exactly what's happening. And I mean, I'm sure you can talk to it too. You have a hundred percent linen drape. You make it to spec. You make it exactly to the length that it's supposed to be. You go put it up, you steam it, and boom, it falls on the floor. Oh, we're going through this. What right do you now. do? No, I already could tell from the sample from the designer just how much movement there was in the little sample. So yeah. We we were installing on an existing rod. Mm -hmm. The client didn't want to change the rod, so the drape length was set. I already took an inch off of the length because I knew this thing was going to grow. Mm -hmm. And then the designer was also freaking out about it. So she, I said, listen, we already took an inch off. And so she's like, well, what if we take another half inch off? I said, we can try it. If anything, we have to just move the rod, not a hard attack, but we can do mm -hmm. it, lower it a little bit. Well, <laughs> the living room fabric grew two inches. Two inches, yeah. So now we've had it in the last, like we, we took it out, we cut <laughs> about an inch and a half off, and now we've had it just hanging in the workroom for the last three mm -hmm. or four weeks just to see if it's going to grow anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Just, 
Yeah, and then we also took, because this is a very fine linen, we had the liner sewn like a typical mm -hmm. lining at the yeah. top and along the sides. And so yeah. what we're doing is we're finding that with this fabric, because it's growing so much, that the liner isn't allowing it to breathe almost, but we still oh, want wow. the drape lined. So we're leaving it lined just at the top. It's attached with the at the pleat, but then it's okay. going to hang freely. So that oh, this wow. way, the liner can grow in, or the face fabric, the linen can grow and shrink, and the liner isn't going to get in its way and stop it from growing. So, like, we are taking all types of, me like, measures. Because here in New Jersey in the summer, we have very humid summers. So that's what happened. We hung the drape in August. And then in September, we had, like, a bunch of hot days in September. This thing, like, when Billy left, it was perfect, perfect. Just, kiss, just kissing the floor and yeah. it, he, he saw it grow as he steamed it because he and he and I told him it's an sure. inch and a half shorter than what 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 is spec here right. and then he steamed it it hit per, it was at exactly the perfect height the designer was like yes we nailed it the client was like yes we nailed it the client went away on business came uh -huh. back and her drapes and were on the floor on the two floor. inches that's right and we and so we are taking all types of measures and now we're, we're waiting to hang it, rehang them for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but going back and forth with the workroom, we just said, you know what, take out the line, like disattach the lining and just let them hang yeah. and see if they grow anymore. Cause then this way we'll give it I a little bit I hate to tell you Kim, but, but what's going to happen is it's not going to grow in the dry oh, in the winter. Of winter. No, it's going to grow in the summer. Um, come next summer it's going to grow again and That's, that is the inherent issue with 100 percent linen so we took um we that's why oh, we're taking off to me once you think you could let the drapes hang at the client with a raw hand yeah. <laughs> and let them stretch and grow before putting the final hem who's saying that i i, I can't quite um, see I, hold on it's it um is. the Text, the textile uh, tailor. tailor. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could, but I feel like we also had this. We had this with two projects right now, where we installed them in February, and then in May, she called the designer. Was like, "Uh, my drape. I woke up this morning and my drapes are on the floor. And this is mm -hmm. an old home that even with mm -hmm. the panels, we had to make them different lengths because her floor is completely forcaged. Yeah. So completely what? messed up it's a it's a nicer way of saying you know um so forgot, yes I, love it. So, <laughs> I never heard that word before <laughs> so um what we did oh there God, was so awesome. we went there i went there in may and looked at them and i said look Lindsay, it's been really it was a really hot and humid weekend and she said you know what let's just see what they end up doing over the summer and so they grew a little bit, they came back up. And so we went there this past September and some of the panels were just like, like perfect. The other one was on the floor. So then that's when she said, you know what? Let me see what happens like in December and January. If these go back up and they're right where you left them in February, then mm -hmm. I'll know like these three panels, they're gonna grow a little bit because my floor is uneven. So like we're kind of beta testing it with this client to see what's happening like in so she's having them up for a basically a year and taking pictures of like all right during this time when it was hot this is yeah. what's happening here because that's what we said to her we said look we can cut them now and then put them back up in a week mm -hmm. and then you know they'll be perfect but then our fear is are they going to shrink back up in <clears throat> in exactly right. in you know december january and then they're going to look like high waters Right. So that's what that's what we're testing. If they don't shrink back up, then we know okay, this fabric has completely stretched. Right. And mm -hmm. and we told her, listen, we've had we've had to do this before, where we had six pairs of um of panels mm -hmm. that the floor again was focaccia. And because <laughs> of where we had to mount the rods, there was no room to play with it. It was a linen. We installed it and the client knew going into this, we're going to install this, we're going to steam it, but we might have to take these down. And we did because each panel, because of the, the level of the floor, the panels were hitting at different heights. So we took them yeah. down and we would mark it like panel 1A, 
you know, 95 and five eighths, panel one B, 95 and a quarter. Like that's how much. And so each panel of these four pairs or six pairs, I don't remember, had a different length. So, yeah. and these are things that we expectation wise, we basically said to the client, look, we're going to hang this and the bottom is going to look like a mess, but yeah. we have to hang it first and see what it's going to mm -hmm. do and then see what mm -hmm. we have to do in order to make it the, the correct length. So. And so when you present the pricing for a project that you know that you're going to have to come back twice, maybe three times, um, do you price accordingly? Uh, I mean, for that particular one where we knew we had to cut it, yes. But these others, this is just stuff that's happened over time. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. thought we did our due diligence, at least with this last one, yeah. by taking an inch and a half off of the length. And who right. would have known that the drape yeah. would have grown yeah. an additional two inches? So, you guys, I have a whole episode on this. So I do this podcast for Luann Nagarish. She, well, her podcast is Window Treatments for Profit. And I have a reoccurring guest series called Vita's Tip in 10. And a few months ago, I did a, a podcast where I talk about um, the unstable fabrics. Really, that's the term. And I had to learn it over the last couple of years where you don't know 100% what's going to happen with the fabric. And even though you can mitigate it by taking one inch off, two inches off, at the end of the day, there's 10 different types of linen, maybe more even, and you don't know what no. exactly how that linen was fabricated, like how that fabric was made. The woven. The yeah. Woven, right, how it was woven and, and exactly how the fabric will behave. So I have to tell you anymore, we have a disclaimer in our estimates and detailed orders where it is really difficult for us to take full responsibility for any kind of fabric that is unstable like that. Now we talk, what's the best fabric to use where this doesn't happen? I'll get to it in a second. So we, we talk with the designer and we really encourage them to not use 100% linen, to I'm not use an anything example. that that has viscose, to not use 100% wool if their customer is incredibly particular about the drape being off the floor by a certain amount of inches, milli, milli inches and so forth. So the best type of fabric to use is a blend, a poly blend. You can mix linen with poly, you can mix cotton with poly, you can mix linen with cotton. Try to avoid mixing anything with viscose. Anytime we see a fabric that is mixed with viscose, we tell the designer, our customer right away that there's going to be issues and that it is impossible. It's not because we don't want to. It is impossible to guarantee the length because it's just impossible to know exactly by how much a fabric will grow. And um, Textile Taylor, let us know what your name is too, please. Yeah. So you asked earlier whether it makes sense to hang the drape unhemmed and do it in customer's home. We actually did that. We had two story situation, full room of windows and functional drapes. It was open weave fabric. We left it unopened and we hemmed on site. We sent our seamster with the table and the iron and the needle, Jill. Hi, Jill. Thank you for all these questions. Yes. Really awesome. So we did all of that on site. And when we left, it was perfect. We did that in April. Guess what happened in June? They grew. They grew. She called us. And actually that situation to this day is unresolved fully because kind of like what Kim was saying earlier, we are having her wait the entire year to mm -hmm. see what happens, whether it grows or shrinks or what happens depending on humidity. And then we will decide what to do. But let me tell you, it is the conversation that we had before or we fabricated the drapes, letting know the customer and the designer this is unstable fabric, it is open weave, and even if we ham it on site, it may still grow or shrink. And so what happens is you have to put the onus, the responsibility of the decision onto the customer. And essentially it is, if growing or shrinking is going to bother you, then this fabric is not for you. Oh, but yeah. if you really, really love this fabric, then you have to be okay with with growing and shrinking 
and so then the, the bottom line of this whole conversation is you have to make a choice what's more important to you and that's the same thing with the same linen if it has wrinkles i can't seam them out i can't sit there yeah. with an iron and press them out it's not going to happen um jill you had asked what are some good alternatives so i have three here kind of like my go-to faux linen if you would um from jf fabrics so you have ringo which looks like this it drapes really nicely it has a linen texture to it um would knit backing help stabilize a hundred percent linen oh mary yeah. hey <laughs> you don't think so i don't know i mean like um, my my fear is like what if the face fabric tries to shirt like to grow like even mm -hmm. when you line it mm -hmm. and then like then you might it might and you might encounter some puckering no so I don't know if I've ever done specifically knit backing. Um, I don't. I don't think I know exactly what's involved. But I will tell you this: recently we did a project in Center City, Philadelphia, at Rittenhouse Square, where we upholstered walls of the entire bedroom, mm -hmm. and we did um, window treatments, curtains, draperies out of the same fabric. And it was cravat, and it was the back of it was treated. Now, I should really find out whether it was knit back specifically or whether it was some sort of chemical treatment. Now, it felt like it was chemically treated because mm -hmm. it, it was like kind of like just waxy. a little bit waxy. Yeah, so it was going to yeah. be plasticky, but yes, yeah, so it was just a little bit waxy on the back. And so that treatment was perfect for the wall upholstery. And um, yeah, so that, that, that part was great. And then, so here, so here is... Mm -hmm. Kind of like going through the same situation but in reverse and in, in a way i left an inch and a half clearance on the bottom mm -hmm. thinking that 100 percent linen is going to grow guess what happened it shrunk it did not shrink but it did, it did not grow as a, it, even a sixteenth of an inch because it probably had that treatment behind it's, it that's exactly right so anytime you have that treatment on the back now i don't know if it's knit backing exactly mary so i'll have to find out what exactly what's involved with that but anytime you treat the fabric on the back with that waxy material mm -hmm. treatment it does not grow so do not give yourself any any more clearance than you absolutely have to because <laughs> we had to rehem it we have to let out the hem now did situation. it did the fabric still have that like flowy feel with that it did it, it did, did okay. actually. Yeah. It really, really did. It was beautiful. So that reminds me. That's a real, really great question, Mary. I'm glad that you brought it up and reminded me. I should find out exactly how it was treated so that maybe in the future, that's actually a good idea to have designers do with 100% linen. No, but here's here another disclaimer. Uh -huh, there's, a, yeah, there's always like, there's never a, a perfect thing, right? Because <laughs> certain, when you treat certain fabrics, especially like we've had, things where they were non-commercial fabrics that had to be treated for a commercial space. And before you even think that, that you, you really want to just test the swatch of it because we had one time where a designer had to eat 50 yards of a velvet. <gasps> what happened? Because it had to get treated and it was like a rush thing where we were like, are you sure you don't want to test it? Send a sample or a yard for them to test. Mm -hmm. And they did not and then we got that lovely call from the company that was treating the fabric that the fibers once they started going through the treatment process it started to shrie and yeah oh wow 50 so yards they actually so, so the treatment actually damaged the face of the fabric so it's mm -hmm. not like it got stiff or it got i don't know wrinkly or not wrinkly it actually damaged the face it ate, a, it ate away fabric. at the fibers Mm -hmm. Oh, ate away at the fire. Yeah, so it looked like it looked like someone just like you know a nice velvet that you just like started cutting lines through it. Yeah, and yeah. so oh man, yeah. When we That's saw hard. the pictures, it like and then they were like, "Can you cut around it? Can you do?" I'm like, "We're like, no." It was like this is, <laughs> this is trash. That's so, gonna be like a real Halloween story, right? Yeah. Like a werewolf looking fabric. So <laughs> when we got it back, I mean, we got a. Yeah, it was. So that's where sometimes like, yeah, certain treatments can work on certain fabrics, but then it's like, how is the fabric going to react to it? What is the allergic reaction going to be? So there's a, there's mm -hmm. a lot, there's yeah, a lot there's that goes lot into it. On. But I think that the whole, because this with this client that her, that we installed her drapes in August and we, you know, the designer called me and said, 
can we take a half inch off? And I told her we already took off an inch. I was super transparent about this is going to grow. I could yeah. already tell from the sample and this is going to be wrinkly. There's no, yeah. I said, Billy's going to hang it. There's no way that he's going to get to take the wrinkles out. Cause I said, in, I said, look at your sample. You see this, you see these mm -hmm. wrinkles here in your sample. That's mm -hmm. the beauty part of linen. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. not something if you don't like this and it scares mm -hmm. you and it hurts your eyes. Yeah. Go with, you know, a faux linen that's going to drape nicely. Tell us again what that faux linen is. So this is one happens to be, a, yeah. so this one is 100% poly. Mm -hmm. Let's see how nice it drapes. And it's 118 yep. inch goods. So that's mm -hmm. one another reason why I love it. Nice. But this is Davenport from JF Fabrics. JF Fabrics, okay. And then this is another one. It's a little thicker and it's a little stiffer. It's called Darjeeling. My designers here love it. They use it all the time. Who is so, this? Which company also? Again, JF. JF, JF has a okay. lot of really good faux linens that we like nice. to use. Okay. But this one has, this one's 100% cotton, I believe. No, it's cotton and, and poly. But it looks mm -hmm. like a linen, but doesn't behave like one. Yep, yep. So. There are a lot of alternatives to linen out there, yes. you guys. So, I mean, I know some people are, you know, on principle, they're opposed to anything that has poly, anything that doesn't have any natural fiber. And right. that's cool, as long as you understand what the repercussions are. Right. But if you're not opposed to it on principle, and you're like, I just want a beautiful fabric that is stable and doesn't give me agita for the next year, then there's really a lot of alternatives in polys and poly blends and cotton blends that looks like linen. It just just need to do a little bit of research yeah. or use what Kim just gave you. Yeah, this one, Pablo, is 13 linen, 22 cotton, and, and then 65 viscose. And again, oh, like viscose. Oh my gosh, I would never use viscose though. No, never. I mean, never. We viscose do. grows. This one we haven't had an issue with. See, the, the, there it is, right here, live in front of you guys. Goes to it's tell so you funny because we, we, we use Pablo. Viscose, it, it grows like crazy. It's, it's oh, that's insanity. So, you know what? I don't know if it's because it has the cotton. It has as much cotton as it does. It's a blend. But, but we it has a lot of viscose. How much viscose does it have? 65. That's a lot. That's but a lot. I heard what's... somewhere that it should never have more than like 20 some percent. Really? Viscose. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, learn something new because we've, yeah. a lot of designers have spec this too. Okay. And we haven't had an issue with it. Because well, good for you. Give that yeah. number again and the and the vendor. So this is JF Pablo, and it's um, 65 viscose, 22 cotton, and 13 linen. From JF Fabrics. And mm -hmm. is it different climates? It, it is, and it's, it's different yeah. times of the year. So yeah. it, here we're in the Northeast. Um, if it's humid, if it's hot, you know, if it's all the things that summer brings, it's the moisture is going to get absorbed into the fibers and it will fall down with gravity. And when yeah. it's cold and dry, the moisture evaporates from the fibers, it shrinks back up. So it has you know, everything to do with the climate. We used to have where our other problem child drape is on the top of the stairs. We had an embroidered linen that would grow and shrink. And again, we left it there that way so that our, our clients could see like, oh, now it's summertime. It's an inch longer than this year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's good. That's really yeah. good. All, All right, right. Let's move off of linens because we yeah. can stay on it for another two hours. Yeah. All right. So real quick, if you um, are thinking about purchasing an awning, because it's another avenue, what we do here at Windowworks, um, head on over to windowworksnj.com where you can get your free buying guide on five mistakes uh, to avoid when buying a quality awning. Nice, nice, nice. Oh. Real quickly. The leading edge again. The linen so this does not, <laughs> now this does not have trim, and this may or may not be linen. But what I was, what I'm trying to show you here is how that leading edge can hike up or ride up, and it has everything to do with the blind hammer that you're using. Mm -hmm. So it's either the different setting, the playing around with it, um, or doing it by hand, or doing it while it is hanging. <laughs> Kim, let's see your baby girl. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a little tough to stand on the uh, bar stool. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you can post some pictures. I yeah. saw the pictures I, of the I, shower. It was I just beautiful. had my baby shower, so I'll post a picture oh. of baby girl and her dad. 
<laughs> good, 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 good. So, and real quick, you guys, I wanted to remind you that as part of Luann's Window Treatment for Profit podcast that she started this year, I am privileged and honored to have a recurring guest seat every Thursday for 10 minutes. I come into your inbox and deliver Vita's Tip in 10 where it is a mighty, a small but very mighty business tip that I share with you. I give you stories, oftentimes my own war stories from the trenches, <laughs> where um, I just try to inspire a little bit and educate you so that you can run a better business and avoid some of the mistakes that I have made. All right, one last one, and then we got to go. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. What do you see? What do you well, spy, my friend? I spy a lot of different, you know, the pleats are more of a blackout because of the folds, and then you have the light filtering coming through on this mock Roman valance. That is exactly right. You ding, ding, ding. You get gold star. You got everything right. 10 out of 10. Um, mwah, this is my gift to you. <laughs> I don't have any prize. So um, it is our preference here at Vitalia Inc. And it sounds like for you too, Kim, to use blackout lining on our balances. Always, now, always. It's a non-negotiable for me. I don't even, I don't even give anybody the option. I say, stop. You know what? This was a balance that was specified by this interior designer, and we talked and talked and talked and talked, and I tried and tried and tried and tried, and she loves the shadow variation. She loves it. I hate it with passion. But listen, she's the ultimate customer. That if that's what she wants. This hat is falling off of me. <laughs> if that's what she wants, you know, we're happy to oblige. My job is to tell her the ramifications of her decisions, the consequences of what she's specifying. I showed her pictures. She's like, I love the shadow variations. I think it adds character and it adds, um, I don't know, depth or some other thing. Personally, I would not want this at all. So you guys decide. If you're a retailer or rather a retail consumer watching us, if you're a designer watching us, if you're a workroom watching us, which way do you prefer? Take a stand and then run with it. You either insist on it or you oblige to whatever the customer wants to do. But at least you can use this as a picture to show your customers what will happen or how it will look when it is all done. And this is inside. Now we do a lot of like mock Roman balances outside. So like now you're getting like even more shadows that you're getting from the top of the window and then the light that comes in and then the folds and the bottom flap. And it's just like. Yeah, I know too much. Sensational seems blackout 110%. You, that's right, girl. What, what's your name? Tell us your yes, name. Yes, that's tell us your difficult. Name. Do you know, you guys are behind the business names and it's wonderful. Jill, would you do blackouts on all working Romans too? Um, no. Good question. Go ahead, Kim. Um, I mean, we, we don't because like I have a, I, in my personal home too, I have a big 110 by 72 inch Roman mm -hmm. on my front window and I installed it five inches above the window frame so that it can match the drape on the other side of the room. And look, I know from doing this, but that's an explanation that we, we give them that yeah. where you're going outside that you're going to have color variation from the top because no light is coming through. But typically, you you have to have those those uncomfortable yeah. nudgy conversations. Hi, Tamara from New. Oh, from Ontario. Yeah, that's sensational. Hey, Tamara. Yeah. So, Jill, to to answer your question from my standpoint, I would go blackout anytime I could because even on the Roman shade, just like on the Roman balance, I do not love the shadow variations. And with the Roman shade, you also see. Oh, love you, tip and ten. Oh, thank you, Tamara. You see the cords, yeah. <laughs> you see the cords, you see the ribs, you see the rings, you see the hems, like you see the whole thing. And to me, it's just, it's distracting. It's not attractive. Again, total personal preference. You do you, I'll do me. Everybody uh, else will do themselves because everybody else is taken. <laughs> so, Kim, we met at Eden. Yes, at yes, we yes, we did. Yes, we did. Nice, nice. Oh, um, you guys. So yeah, yeah no, so. but see, like, th th there you go, there you go. We see Vita and I, we don't always agree a hundred percent. Absolutely not, and, and that's the idea. You go around. You take yeah. your your own stand, and yeah. you stand in your Sandra Funks. You stand in your space. Your space. <laughs>
<laughs> you stand in your space and and you just if you serve a customer you just need to educate them if you're a customer then you need to decide what you want and then not change your mind later <laughs> no and i and i think too jill what's also important is like pictures are key pictures mm -hmm. are everything even like when i do a sheer roman shade um i have a large sheer roman shade in my home that I have pictures of to show you're going to see the pickups. You're going to see all the rings. You're going to see all that. So is this something that it's going to bother you? And if it is, and you don't want it to be blackout in the room, then we have to come up with a completely different design. That's right. Yeah. This was a lot of stories to share you guys. <laughs> a lot of scary stories, but uh, we do have to come to an end at some point. <laughs> yes. So, um, Thank you all so much for watching today's episode. If you want to follow along on our window treatment journey and see what we are up to, or if you ha need any help on your next window treatment project, please follow Window Works at Window Works on Instagram and on Facebook. Send us a DM and we would love to hear from you. And if you are in the Philadelphia area and you're an interior designer looking to avoid some of these scary situations, I would love to support you and my company, Vitalia Inc. We are a one-stop shop and go-to resource exclusively for luxury interior designers ready to fly first class in the world of window treatments. And if you are any, a window treatment pro, follow me on Instagram and listen to the Vita Stephen 10 podcast. So I would love to connect with you in every which way. Alrighty, everyone. We hope you have a great weekend. Happy Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> we hope Try you to enjoy avoid all the scary stories. Yes. We hope you have Go Phillies. That's for... right. <laughs> oh, boo. The Yankees are out. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Stupid Houston Astros. Okay. Anyway. Um... <laughs> no, we digress. All right. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Happy Halloween. Join us here every Friday because if it's Friday, it's Window Treatment Friday Live, or as we lovingly like to call it, WTF Live. <laughs> All Bye, right, everybody. everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.